Hey, it's Noel coming to you with another video. I like to see some different news that comes out and it's always very interesting to see and, and see some correlation with this. And the things I wanna talk about real quick is Zillow. So Zillow iBuyer is no longer going to leverage agents to represent them in the iBuyer transactions. And everybody saw this coming a mile, uh, you know, a million miles away, as well as Open Door, uh, OfferPad. They're all gonna leverage their own internal agents. Why wouldn't they? They can pay them a salary and they can manage the transaction. Uh, I read a lot of comments online from other real estate agents who said, well, but Zillow is still going to use us for certain things. It's a big difference there because they're a vendor to Zillow, not an agent representing them in the transaction. And so I guarantee you that they're going to get beat up on what they can charge and how they can charge things as a vendor. And there's going to be some set pricing for them to do simple things like go in and inspect a property, do some things that need to be done in market rather than remotely. So that's an interesting thing. And that segues into the other thing. There are home builders who are now embracing the SFR space. I spend a lot of my time trying to get in front of home builders to buy their inventory so that we can sell it to funds or investors, uh, 1031 exchange investors, whatever. But now the home builders are starting to own these properties themselves. And I have this conversation all the time with home builders and just is what it is when they ask me, well, how should I approach this space? And I say, you have cheap capital, you should be owning the homes long term. And up until recently, I got a lot of pushback with that. More recently, builders have been coming to me and saying, we need to figure out how to manage these homes. And that's a big difference. So all of these funds and investors that are out there and they're trying to buy from the builders, it's getting harder, not easier. The point of this, I don't know. It's just that something I'm seeing in, in, in the market, you've got a lot of money chasing not enough inventory. And I don't know when that's going to end. And I just had a conversation recently with one of my clients just a few minutes ago, actually, talking about how they're getting beat out on deals at such low yields. I want to caution everybody in this space. Owning single family rentals at scale is not a clip the coupon type of thing. It's not a bond. It is an active investment that you must manage. And the lower the yields go, the more complicated it's gonna be for there to be any room for error in owning these properties. You get a couple of things wrong on the rents. The rents maybe don't go up as high as they do. Maybe you have some maintenance issues. Your expenses for sure are gonna go up and cost of doing business will always go up. So that is just a cautionary tale. Um, although because of all this interest, I mean, it just solidifies how great of a space this is and how active it is. I just see a lot of, I don't want to call it dumb money, but a lot of money that's not maybe seasoned in this space coming into the SFR space, thinking that if they just buy community homes, it's going to manage itself and everything goes uh, as planned. It's not how it works. So my last video was a little bit about the cautionary tale about owning SFR. And this is not an easy space to be in, but it's still a great space. If you can figure it out, like a lot of things, that are hard. It's well worth your time. So I wanted to throw that out there. Thanks for watching. Let me know if you have any questions and I uh, appreciate your feedback.